going so close together and because I had a two rats condition, very, very difficult for me to maintain that kind of, of uh, space without crashing or something. And then I chanced upon this YouTube video where they showed this cycling crash. And how people were like broken bones, like metal spokes in their hands. I'm like, okay, wait, wait, wait. you always see autistic people as people who are, who are unable to take care of themselves, who are always in a wheelchair. You know, that's how the media portrays it. They told me, yeah, it's autism. During the diagnosis itself, it doesn't really hit you. Then when he was explaining all the symptoms that come with it, you know, inability to focus, the shutdowns, the meltdowns, the inability to mingle with people, socialize, then you start realizing that everything that's happened from the day you know it's happening to that very day happens for a reason. And that's actually who you are. Hi, my name is Darren, I'm 39, and I'm a... Take three. <laughs> Hi, my name is Darren. I'm 39. I work in a public service. Uh, I also have ADHD, Tourette's and autism. In class, I can't sit still trying to talk to the person next to me, you know, disturb the girl in front of me, whatever it is, right? And then when it would come to classes, I would, I would kind of zone out. The teachers would always say that, that I was very inattentive, make a lot of careless mistakes. And it was always a case where I was also struggling to fit in with other kids. They would form their cliques, they would be playing and all that. I would try to fit in. Uh, but it was always a little bit awkward. Like, I didn't really know how to behave. I didn't really know how to be me. Well, in the 90s, uh, being different is a dangerous word. Huh? <laughs> all right. Uh, first of all, in the 90s, uh, Words like ADHD, autism, Tourette's, these are taboo words. No one ever wants to talk about it. And I never suspected it. I, it's very hard for you to suspect it because you're kind of who you are. And I never really developed the person I was. You know, as a kid, if you're growing up, you don't fit into the group, you kind of get outcasted. People say very mean things, say very nasty things. My Tourette's was already um, happening at that point in time. So they'll say things like, oh, you know, uh, you are, you are different, you are weird. Like, why are you so strange? Some of them even went to the extent of saying that maybe your IQ is not very high. And so it becomes a little bit of a, becomes a bit of a downer. La. I guess as a kid, that's not very nice listen, hearing. But like I said, you roll with it. La. You literally have to roll with it and take it. Yeah. So I was actually having a meal in one of the food centers and then it was a very hot day. I remember it was very hot, I was really very bothered, very humid, I was perspiring like crazy. It was lunchtime, you know, you had everyone who was talking at the same time and then it kind of got to me. And I felt like this thing, this thing kind of, kind of like a volcano that's going to erupt, right? And flipped one of those chairs, kind of don't remember what happened, and, but then I remember I left a, a, a scene and then someone actually wanted to call the police. They thought maybe it was this crazy guy on the loops, right? I, I remember I went back to my car and I was thinking something is not quite right. Uh, and if this is going to happen once, it might happen again. So I figured it's the best time to get a diagnosis. So when he finally told me that, hey, so you are definitely ADHD. Um, your Tourette's is quite obvious, uh, but you're also autistic. And then it hit me like, huh, autistic, mm, autistic word doesn't register and then suddenly realizing boom this is actually who you are you've actually not done anything wrong this is really who you are and then you go damn it means now i need to i need to relearn to be myself because i've learned to be other people so people who are close to me would not understand why you drink so much, why you eat so much, why you don't care about health. When people confront you about the issues, you shut down and you don't talk about it. And you, for us, when we shut down, we really don't talk about it. Like, I can keep quiet about it for like 50 years and not want to talk about it anymore. So that kind of behavior kind of puts a dent in the relationship. Then they're like, oh, how come you, how come you don't talk to me anymore? It's one thing if you are the person lying there on the bed and you pass away. But you see all your relatives and you see his own mother, which was my grandmother, almost inconsolable because you can't do anything to help, right? You're really just waiting for the person to go. And I realized that that's not a fair thing to do. Lah. Um, and you can't treat people that way, right? And then it kind of, in my head, I was like, okay, I don't think I can be unfair to my parents and to my family. So I decided that enough was enough, lah. time to change. Um, 
when I turned the corner, I decided that I wanted to change my, my the way I was living. I now actually I use the word indulge lah in exercise lah. So I try to keep as fit as I as I possibly can within what's humanly possible. You know the funny thing is when I was growing up, I always laughed at these people. And swim bike run, xiao, walao, eh. do one thing not enough, still must swim bike and run. Crazy, right? Mad. Ay, karma. <laughs> and then he said, well, if you're really serious, you knowing you, since you've dropped from 150 to 90 already, if you put your mind to it, I'm quite sure you can do it. Lah. So I said, okay, so I made it a point, right? And I told myself that by the end of 2016, I'll do my first Ironman. Until I realized it takes a very long time to train for your first Ironman. I was like, oh my god, like, what have I gotten myself into? Long story short, that was how I got into, into triathlon. I don't think it actually ever gets easier. So if you're having a shutdown, a meltdown, or throwing a tantrum, be understanding, let it pass, and then be there for them. Um, everyone's different. I think we all express ourselves in different ways. If you think you have a disability and you're not diagnosed, get it diagnosed. It's a tremendous weight off your shoulders. And also, it's good to get a little bit of professional help. Fortunately or unfortunately, we, we, if we're different per se, then the usual things don't apply to us anymore. We need to find solutions to the problem. And my advice is really just be open about it and talk about it. Talk about it to the people that you trust and tell them why you're struggling. And, and you'll be surprised. A lot of people will be out there ready to help.